You give us life, but are we truly living? We come here thirsty, empty and dry. We stand here needy when we could be reaching. We're drinking water when you offer wine. Take us deeper Where we've never been before Lift us higher Open heaven's door Draw us closer Closer to you, Lord Great giving God Great giving God Great giving God, we need you more. You give us hope, but are we really leaning? You hold the power to break every chain. Thank you for freedom that your cross keeps giving. Because of mercy, we won't be the same. Take us deeper, where we've never been before. Lift us higher, open heaven's door. Columbus United Methodist Church. Boy, it's nice to see everybody this morning. See the sunshine? Nice to see the Boy Scouts here this morning. I have a few announcements to make. Uh, as usual, please register your attendance in the Red Attendance Book. The weekly prayer hour is Tuesday, 10 a.m. in the sanctuary. Trustee meeting is Thursday, November 7th at 5.30 in the chapel. Grace's Table is Sunday, November 10th, 5 p.m. in the Youth Center. And the All Church Thanksgiving Dinner is Sunday, November 17th, following Sunday School. Meat, dressing rolls, and drinks are provided. Everyone is asked to bring a side dish or dessert to share. And the Hanging of the Greens will be Sunday, November 24th. Lunch will be provided. Are there any other announcements? Pastor?
No, okay. If not, please stand and join me in the call to worship. God is calling you today. Help us to hear God's call in our lives. God needs your gifts and graces to help others. May we use the blessing which God has given us to benefit others. Come, let us worship and celebrate God's love for us. Let us show our faithfulness in our words and actions. Amen. survive the time change? Yeah. Enjoy that extra hour of sleep? Did I hear somebody say no? I like that extra hour of sleep. I got up at 5 o'clock this morning. Oh well. In big people's church today, they're going to talk about Noah's Thanksgiving. Now what in the world could Noah have to be thankful for? Why would Noah give thanks? Let me read you something. Let me see if I can find it again. Um, so Noah came out together with his son and his wife and his son's wife. All the animals and all the creatures that move along the ground and all the birds, everything that moves on the earth came out of the ark, one kind after another. Then Noah built an altar to the Lord, and taking some of all the clean animals and clean birds, he sacrificed burnt offerings on it. The Lord smelled the pleasing aroma and said in his heart, Never again will I curse the ground because of man, even though every, every inclination of his heart, that means man, us, um, is evil from childhood. And never again will I destroy all living creatures as I have done. So let me ask you again, what do you think Noah had to be thankful for? How long was he in the ark with all those animals? Seven months. Have you ever been on a farm? No? How do farms smell when they've got a lot of animals in the barn? Awful? Yeah, yeah. How do you think it smelled inside that ark? Yeah, me too. And I like farm animals. I like the way they smell. I know, I'm strange. I also like the Cleveland Browns. There you go, Jim. 
But Noah and his family and all the animals came out of the ark. And the first thing that, that Noah did was to build an altar and give thanks to God. Because God kept him safe that whole time. Just as he promised to do, God kept his promise. And how did God show that he was going to always keep his promise? The rainbow. the rainbow, that's right. So every time you see the rainbow, you know that that's God reaffirming his promise to us. So Noah had a lot to be thankful for, didn't he? And when we look at that rainbow, do we have anything to be thankful for? Yes, because God always keeps his promise. Whatever that promise is, God will keep it. Can you remember that? It's a lot to remember, but you can do it, can't you? All right, let's pray. Lord, we thank you for the promise of the rainbow. We thank you because we have the assurance and the reassurance that you will keep every promise that you have made to us. No matter how big, no matter how small, we can count on you to keep your promise. We come to praise you and give great thanksgiving for all the promises that you have made to us. Help us to keep our promise to you always. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, guys. So now let's take a moment to pray about what we have heard and also our own personal prayers. Let's pray together. Gracious God, we come before you with hearts full of gratitude, recognizing your goodness in every corner of our lives. We thank you for the gift of this new day, for the breath in our lungs, and the warmth of communion. We thank you for family, friends, and our church family, who support and encourage us on our journey of faith. O oh Lord, we are especially grateful for your presence, which never leaves us. Even when we walk through challenging times, you walk beside us, offering comfort and strength. In moments of joy and in seasons of sorrow, you are our constant source of peace. We thank you, most of all, for your saving grace in Jesus Christ, through his life, death, and resurrection, you have given us a gift beyond measure, salvation and eternal life. May our lives reflect our gratitude for this gift, and may we be faithful in sharing your love with others. Please grant your healing to those who are sick. Give peace to those who have broken hearts. Help us to love you and love our neighbors. We love you, Lord. Here's the word of assurance. God's love and restoring mercy are poured out for us. Receive these blessings, for we are loved by God, 
and granted forgiveness and mercy. Amen. And now we pray the prayer our Lord Jesus Christ told us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. It's time to respond to God's grace in our lives and support the ministry of this church with our gift. Your church, please come forward. <laughs> and while we're doing that, we're going to sing For the Beauty of the Earth, and it'll be on the screen. Please stand if you're able. Please be seated. I 
Scripture reading this morning is from Genesis 8, 15, 9 through 1. Then God said to Noah, Go out of the ark, you and your wife and your sons and your sons' wives with you. Bring out with you every living thing that is with you of all flesh, birds and animals and every creeping thing that creeps on the earth, so that they may abound on the earth and be fruitful and multiply on the earth. So Joel went out with his sons and his wife and his sons' wives and every animal, every creeping thing and every bird, everything that moves on the earth went out of the ark by families. Then Joel built an altar to the Lord and took of every clean animal and of every clean bird and offered burnt offerings on the altar. And when the Lord smelled the pleasing odor, the Lord said in his heart, I will never again curse the ground because of humans, for the inclination of the human heart is evil from youth, nor will I ever again destroy every living creature as I have done. As long as the earth endures, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night shall not cease. God blessed Noah and his sons and said to them, Be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth. This is the word of God for the people of God. Praise, Praise be to God. God. Please be seated. Please, children, are dismissed for the children's church. Yeah. Morning. Morning. Let's greet each other with this word. May peace be with you. 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 Amen. 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 November. It's a month of thanksgiving. We give thanks to God, thanks to our families, and thanks to our friends and church family. I received a card and gift during pastor's appreciation a month, and I'm truly grateful. Thank you so much. And I could feel the love of God. God teaches us gratitude because our nature is to forget very quickly. If we do not consciously think about what we are thankful for, our nature automatically leads us toward complaining. This is why the Bible shows us many, many stories of thanksgiving. During the month of November, I'll share four sermons on the theme of Thanksgiving. Today's first sermon on Thanksgiving is about Noah's Thanksgiving. So let's start and read aloud Genesis chapter 8, 15 to 17 together. Let's read together. Then God said to Noah, Go out to the earth, you and your wife, 
and your sons and your sons' wives with you. Bring out with you every living thing that is with you of all flesh, birds and animals and every creeping thing that creeps on the earth, so that they may abound on the earth and be fruitful and multiply on the earth. Amen. Theologically, Genesis chapter 1 to 11 are called the primeval history. These are stories from before recorded history. The creation story, Noah's story, and the story of power of Babel have a different style writing. But their stories, they're meant to convey important theological truth. They illustrated the relationship between humanity and God, humans fall, and God's redemptive plan. Noah's time was marked by humanity's moral decline and the peak of sin. In Genesis 6, it says that every thought and intention of people's heart was only evil. The entire earth was corrupt, filled with violence. Our heart is important. If there is evil in the heart, it rules that person's life like a poison. Conversely, if we have Jesus Christ in our heart, God's love in our heart, our life becomes like Jesus. We follow Jesus' way. But in Noah's time, the people, their heart, inside, every sin was in there. And what is the root of sin? It is insisting on our way rather than God's way. God told Adam and Eve not to eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, but they were tempted and ate it. God gave the Israelites laws to follow, but they acted according to their own desires. So Judges 21-25 expresses this well. All the people did what was right in their own eyes. This is sin. This is the sign of sin. The sign of sin becoming as dominant as it was in Noah's day is this. People start doing what is right in their own eyes. They redefine marriage according to their perspective, redefine family, and even identity based on personal views. When these behaviors spread, people gradually accept and endorse it, which is evidence of seeing spread this word. This is not a good news. It is bad news is. But also, this applies not only to grave sins like murder, rape, or homosexuality, but also the small hidden sins within us that seek to prioritize our desire over God's will. Therefore, this is not a this is not about declaring ourselves righteousness and condemning others as sinners, but about beginning with our own repentance. We should repent every small sin. Murder is sin and so is lying. Homosexuality is sin and so our lustful thought in our heart is also the important point is that we don't measure the size of sin 
but we should seek repentance eagerly. Because only those who repent can meet God. Amen. So today I pray that we will all come before the Lord with a heart of repentance. Amen? Amen. 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 So in Noah's generation, Noah's people, when the scene of Noah's generation reached their limit, God was waiting for that, but it, 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 it's not working. God grieved, and God said, I will wipe from the face of the earth the human race I have created. And with them, the animal that move along the ground, I regret that I have made them. God grieved. But also, God is love. Even in the midst of such desperate lamentation, God's love planned the salvation. God prepared a way of salvation through one man, Noah, who walked with God. Noah held on to the God's word and walked with the Lord in the midst of a sinful world. Here's the example. God instructed him to build an ark. People are mocked. Noah may build an ark on the mountain. Ha ha ha. He mocked him. People mocked Noah. But Noah obeyed. Obeyed. This is weird. Why is mountain? It's weird, but Noah obeyed. Eventually, God sent rain for 40 days and night, and the waters covered the earth for 150 days, sweeping away all life. Noah, his family, and pairs of animals remained in the ark. It is estimated that they stayed in the ark uh, for about one year. Then God said to Noah, come out of the ark you and your wife, and your sons and their wives. Noah came out. What was Noah's first thought as he stepped out of the ark? He gave thanks for salvation. He felt salvation with every part of his being. His skin, his whole body can feel that salvation. I'm saved. The world as he knew it was completely destroyed. Everyone had perished, and he was arrived. Is there any experience of salvation more tangible than this? I arrived. I am saved. When we enter the gate of heaven, we will all feel this way. Because we don't often feel the weight of salvation in our daily lives. We sometimes take it lightly. It looks so far. So we take it lightly. But if we were to truly see the heaven and hell before us, wow, we would realize the incredible nature of the salvation we have received. So my beloved, our first thanksgiving is for our salvation. God completes salvation by sending His only Son, Jesus Christ, to this world. God thought us, called us, planted faith in us, and gifted us with salvation. I pray that we can give thanks for the salvation we have received. Amen? Amen. This is his first thanksgiving. So now let's read aloud the next verse, Genesis 8, 20. Let's read. Then Noah built an altar to the Lord, and took of every clean animal and of every clean bird, 
and offer burnt offerings on the altar. Amen. <laughs> After seeing his salvation, what did he do? He worshipped. He worshipped. Noah did not let his gratitude go unexpressed. He actually expressed it. As soon as he got out of the ark, he built an altar to God and offered burnt sacrifices of the clean animals and birds he had. It was a thanksgiving offering. Our gratitude must be expressed. Why do we worship? Why do we worship? God already knows that we love Him. God know, already knows our heart even without word, without worship. He knows we are grateful to Him. He knows everything. But He delights in our worship because it is an expression of our inner heart. Imagine a young child coming to their mom and saying, Mom, I love you. Mom, I love you. The mother already knows of her child's love. But hearing those words bring double the joy. My beloved friends, we sing with joy in our heart. We offer sacrifices out of overflowing gratitude this time, right? We're grateful and we worship God. And we confess our love for God because we love Him. So we confess, oh Jesus, we love you. Oh Lord, we thank you. We thank you, Lord. This is our gratitude and this is our expression. When we give our tithe and offerings, these are also expression of our gratitude. Everything we have belongs, everything we have belongs to God. He provides our food, clothing, and sweet home. Our offerings express our acknowledgement that all we have is God's. Amen. Thank you, Lord. All I have is yours. I express my gratitude to you. This is my expression. My friends, love needs to be expressed. Gratitude needs to be expressed. I pray that today's worship, our worship may be our expression of thanksgiving. Amen? Amen. Okay, now let's read together the last verse. Genesis 9 First, nine one. Let's read together. God blessed the Lord and his sons and said to them, Be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth. Lastly, God blessed Noah and his son and gave them a new covenant. Be fruitful and increase in number and fill the earth. Never again will I destroy the earth and all living creatures by a flood. He probably gave us promise. And with these words, God gave the rainbow as a sign of the covenant. The rainbow symbolized the covenant between God and human being, reminding us of God's promise. We see rainbow and we remind God's promise. He promised me the salvation. Thank you, Lord. So Noah deeply thanked God for this blessing and new covenant. <coughs> and this command, be fruitful and multiply, was the same as the one given to Adam and Eve, now renewed for Noah. So through Noah and his descendants, God ensured that humanity would once again feel the earth. This covenant and the story of salvation continue through Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Moses, David, and ultimately to Jesus Christ. This promise. 
God fulfilled His promise. And now we receive that promise as well. We receive the promise. Our Savior. When we believe in Jesus Christ, He gave us the gift of salvation. This is the true grace of God. How grateful we are. What amazing grace. God is so good to us. Amen. Right? Amen. Reflecting on Thanksgiving, I came across a passage from Helen Keller's essay, If I Had Three Days to See. Helen Keller was blind, so she couldn't uh, see. But she wrote the essay, If I Had Three Days to See. Here is her writing. Of the things I should see if I had the power of sight for just three days, the first day, would be a busy one. I should call to me all my dear friends and look long into their faces, imprinting up in my mind the outward evidence of the beauty that is within them. And I should like to look into the lawyer trusting eyes of my dog, the stuart great thing. And I should pray for the glory of a colorful sunset. That night, I think I should not be able to sleep. The next day, I should arise with the dawn and see the thrilling miracle by which night is transformed into day. I should want to see the man's progress and so I should go to museum. The evening of my second day, I should spend at the theater or at the movies. Today, the third day, I shall spend in the workday world. Amid the man going about the business of life, the city becomes my destination. First, I stand at a busy corner, merely looking at people trying by sight of them to understand something of their daily lives. My third day of sight is droning to an end. At midnight, permanent night would close in on me again. I am, however, sure that if you face that fate, you would use your eyes as never before. Everything you saw become dear to you. This is essay from Helen Keller. And I thought, as Helen Keller wrote this essay, she was probably dreaming of the promised land, the kingdom of God, heaven, writing down her hope. Although she could not see that now, she'll see it again the day she meets the Lord. And how thankful she'll be. God's promise is all of us to live on this earth with hope. Because we have that promise. That's right. So my beloved brothers and sisters, let us be thankful. Let's give thanks for the grace of our salvation. Let's give thanks that we can worship God. Let's give thanks for the blessing of living today with loved ones. Today the Lord has prepared for us a table of communion. And we'll come, let's come together and let's take his bread and wine. Thank you, Lord. Have mercy on us. Amen. Now let's take a moment to pray and prepare for the Holy Kingdom. Let's pray.
Now we are going to sing the communion hymn. Let us break bread together. After that, we will receive the communion. from God. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sins before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church we have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors. And we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Okay. Let's take a moment of silence and let's repent again. This is the word of forgiveness. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your heart. You lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through the prophets. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join the unending hymns. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God, God of power and, and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. 
And the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread. Give thanks to you, broke the bread, gave to his disciples and said, Take it. <coughs> this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these mighty act in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. risen. Christ will come again. My brothers and sisters, because there is one loaf, we who are many are one body. For we all partake of the one loaf. The bread which we break is a sharing in the body of Christ. The cup over which we give thanks is sharing in the blood of Christ. Please come forward to take
Let's pray. Eternal God, we give thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others. Go forth in peace. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.